So, the next thing we want to talk about is instability. So, decision trees are pretty unstable. So, what we mean by not stable? All of you know what we mean by not stable. Small changes in the training data will could cause potentially large changes in the decision tree. So, what could happen? Things that you split at the root might go somewhere down because of some changes in the data, right? And if uh, the data you start out with small, right, the sample size is small, then the variation is going to be very high. So, is there any way of getting around it? Some of it, some some regularization helps to some extent. Uh, that's all the pruning and stuff helps to some extent, uh, but uh, still not a lot, right? Because the variance is really high. This thing is really unstable, uh, but still trees are very useful. So, what we will do is uh, we look at a very specific technique. Huh? Exactly. So that's that's what we are going to do. Uh, one of the ways of uh, doing uh, it's yeah. So there's a very specific technique called uh, uh, bagging, right? So I not the next not the next next four classes from now. Okay, I'll do bagging in more detail, right? Uh, but uh, the basic idea is that uh, to minimize variance, it's not just with trees. You could do it with uh, any any unstable classifier. So what you do is instead of training it on the data that is given to you, you train on slightly different versions of the data, right. Maybe you can just take say 70 percent of the data, randomly choose 70 percent of the data and then train a tree, randomly choose another 70 percent, train another tree, keep doing this and then somehow combine the class labels predicted by all the copies of the trees that you have trained, okay. So this allows you to have slightly more stable classifier. What is the problem with this? Yes, anything else? Computation, you take a lot of time. Anyone else? I, I think I heard somebody say that. You lose the biggest advantage of decision trees, which is simple comprehensibility. So, instead of having one tree, you have 15 trees or 100 trees, now again you have the problem of keeping your job and your manager asks you to explain what happened, right? So, now I have 100 trees and somehow they make this magical prediction and you do not know. Right, so, so that is that is the problem. Right. So, smoothness in your prediction is something that you are looking for, okay. Decision trees are not going to give you that, right. Yes, there will always be this jagged jumping around especially regression trees right so when you are talking about uh, making some predictions if you are using a piecewise constant fit right for every region you are going to have some amount of jumping around so if you are looking for a smooth function for doing your prediction this is not going to work so you will have to do some kind of post processing after you build the tree in order to smooth the predictions right and there is nothing you can do that is the nature of the beast so the trees are so much convenient in other ways but smoothness is a problem. So, if you are looking for a smooth fit right for your prediction uh, that is not going to happen and uh, could be this problem of having repeated sub trees. So, what do I mean by that? When you are like multi way splits, then if say blue and green are actually like not multi way splits, you know, it does not have to be multi way splits, even in binary splits, you can get into this problem. Think of XOR, right. How will XOR look like, right? I will split on X1. If X1 is 0, I will go down the left branch, X1 is 1, I will go down the right branch, and then what do I do in the left branch? I will text on the test on X2. If x2 is 0, I will go down one branch, x2 is 1, I will go down the other branch, and likewise I will test on x2 on the other side. If it is 0, I will go down one branch, I will go 1, I will go down the other branch. So, if you can think of it, these two subtrees are kind of similar, right? So, it could very well be that I split on one attribute, but everything underneath it could be similar, the tree structure is very similar, but I cannot collapse it because I end up with different conclusions. 
right. So, if x, x 1 was 0 and x 2 was 0, I would, I would be outputting 0, right. But x 2 was 1 and x 1 was 0, I would be outputting 1. So, the outcomes are different. So, I cannot really club the two trees, but then the tests that I do are exactly the same, right. So, decision trees are prone to having this kind of repeated subtrees, right. So, you could have the same test set of tests that are actually implemented in many, many different points in the tree, right. So, it just makes the tree more complex, uh, but there might be other ways of reordering things, so that you get with the simple, XOR is a bad case, right. So, if you reorder XOR, you still get with the, you still end up with the same kind of repeated structure, but there might be other cases where you might have just done the splitting in the normal way, but you end up with too much repeated structures. But if you had, you flip the ordering of some variables, even though it is not the best variable to pick at some point, but you might end up with a more compact tree. But finding that is, finding that is very hard, finding that ordering is very hard. Uh, so, so, you have to just live with it. I am just pointing out some of the caveats. Right? So, so far, we have assumed that we are dealing with a 0 1 loss function. So, what is a 0 1 loss function for classification? Right, yeah, I miss this as good as a mile. I mean, I do not care. There is no ordering in my class labels. If I miss, if I do not predict it correctly, I penalize you with 1. If I predict it correctly, it is 0. But there might be cases where some misclassifications are more acceptable for you than others, right. So, what do you do in such cases? Right. So, you are going to have some kind of a loss value, right. So, I am going to have some kind of some L k k prime, which is essentially the, pro the loss that I will suffer by classifying the data into k prime when it is actually class k, correct. So, I am going to have this. So, how do I accommodate that in the decision tree setup. How do I accommodate, how would I accommodate that in the SVM setup, optimal hyperplanes? Huh? By the way, all of you are missing one thing, we never actually talked about how you use SVMs for multiple classes. Someone asked me the question. What is what is the margin maximum margin? What does the margin mean when you have multiple classes? That's a topic for another day. I'll come back to that. But uh, yeah, so SCM is not uh, immediately clear, right? Uh, so how you do that? So suppose you have neural networks, right? We all know about neural networks, right? All of you are familiar with backprop by now, I suppose, right? So how will you accommodate this kind of thing in backprop? Can I think of ways of doing it? Okay. So, it, it turns out there is no easy way of doing any of these, um, but uh, what you can do is at least in decision trees try to incorporate this when you are computing your guinea index or your what information gain whatever right. So, whenever you are looking when you are doing that so, you can figure out okay, what is the probability that I will misclassify this. So, what is the guinea index expression that we have, right. Right. So, this is what we had, right. So, this essentially this was the probability that right a data point in region m will be in class k right times the probability that data point in region m will not be in class k right. So, there is another way I can write this which is essentially
right. So, the probability that the point is k class k and probability that it is k prime. Right? So, essentially from here to here what I need to do is take out all the terms where with p hat m k and sum out sum up over the remaining. So, which will be 1 minus p hat m k right. So, that is essentially what I did. So, for each k I, I take p hat m k out from here and sum over the remaining things and I will get this expression okay. So, this is some way of saying that okay the original probability is k okay and the estimated probability is k prime okay this, this is some way of looking at it. So, here what I can do is I can add my L k k prime. So, you have to actually work this out for all of the measures that you are going to work with. So, if you are going to have a um, um, neural network I mean squared error criterion you are minimizing or cross uh, I mean the deviance that you are uh, uh, cross entropy you are minimizing whatever is the error function you are minimizing you have to figure out what is the appropriate way to use this uh, class uh, information there, this class specific loss information okay. Uh, there was a not equal to there right. Yeah. Okay. Without this yes they are equal right without this they are equal. So, essentially what is what I am doing here is so for every k right I am writing one one term like this. So, he this this I can simplify like this right. So, that is p hat m 1 summation k prime not equal to 1 p hat m k prime plus p hat m 2 summation k prime not equal to 2 p hat m k prime right like that I can do that. So, I will get k such terms and this summation is essentially 1 minus p hat m 1 and this summation is 1 minus p hat m 2 right like that. So, that is essentially what I get here okay fine. So, like that you have to work it out for every thing. So, if you have a different loss function okay.